Good morning, everyone. I did remember we just sang holy, holy, holy today. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. We are happy again to have all of you here with us. And we also welcome those who are watching by video. And if you are a guest here with us today, welcome. Um, and we hope that you will feel comfortable with us. We thank Dr. Cole and his lovely wife, Barbara, again this week for being with us. Thank you, Dr. Cole. Here. We are always blessed with his presence. There's just a couple of things I have to say. We're not going to do a lot of announcements today, but um, there's, a couple, there's something we missed last week. And it was a very important birthday. And we're sorry, Wit, that we missed your 85th birthday. So congratulations. And there's also an insert in the bulletin uh, regarding uh, Halifax chaplaincy that is uh, very important for us to read. Uh, read the, the, uh, all of the announcements because there won't be, Wendy won't be giving the announcements today because of communion. We're trying to save a little time, although I'm talking a lot. So anyway, I'll try to hurry it. Um, the Halifax chaplaincy is short money this year, and they, uh, you know, were just wondering if the churches could help them out, and that's something we have to think about and pray about, and maybe we can decide what we're going to do. Um, also, CE After Church is selling egg sal salad sandwiches and Rice Krispie Squares uh, for $4, uh, if anybody can help them out with that. There's just one other thing. Where this is communion, every communion Sunday we have uh, the brass plates, one back there in the corner uh, by the door on the chair and one at the entrance. That is just to help the Benevolence Committee. Uh, they, they try to help out people who are in need throughout the community and in our congregation. So just to, to help them a little bit if you have any spare change. Okay. Um, I think that is it. So now we will do the invocation prayer. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we have much to think about in our lives, but let us take some time to be with you, and in doing so, things will be much easier to deal with. We need you. And we need relationship with you. Thank you for being near us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hymn 482, My Hope is in the Lord.
Let us bow our heads now for the prayers of the people. Most gracious, loving God, we come to you with thanks and love. We thank you for keeping us safe, keeping us healthy, keeping us hopeful. We owe all we have to your loving goodness. Thank you, wonderful Father. We pray for those in war-torn countries, of which there are so many. Lord, take care of them, protect them. We ask for a good outcome for this broken world. We know you are with us and that you love this world. So we again will remain hopeful. We ask now for you to lay your healing hands on all those who are ill, Lord. Be with them, as well as those having tests and those recovering. We pray they will feel your warm embrace. We ask for comfort for those grieving as well. We pray they don't feel alone. May they be uplifted. Lord, we ask for those in nursing homes and other care facilities to be cared for by loving health care workers. We pray for rest and resilience for these workers so they can give their patients the best care. During this time of remembrance, we think of those who gave their lives in wars past and present. We thank all who fought in these wars for our peace and freedom. Now, Lord, we also are very thankful for Reverend Sheila, and we thank you for helping her to recover and for her return to us next week. May you continue to strengthen her and bless her. We also thank you for Dr. Cole. He, along with Reverend Jocelyn and Reverend Webb, have been a blessing to us. May all those also now, with birthdays and anniversaries this week, have a blessed week. And may we all treat each and every person with the utmost love and respect. Let us now pray silently for a moment. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now Wit will do the scripture. Good morning. Good morning. A reading from the book of Psalms. Psalm 96. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name, tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all peoples. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord, Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the holy splendor. Tremble before him all the earth. 
Say among the nations, the Lord is king. The world is firmly established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he is coming, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. This is the word of the Lord. now our offertory prayer. Gracious Father, there are so many places to put our money, but there is no better place than to give back to you. May we remember you are our provider. Thank you, dear Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
it is a privilege for me to be with you the second Sunday in a row. I'm the one who speaks with a funny accent. So you have to listen very carefully. That's an advantage I have. <laughs> you have to listen very carefully so that you get a message. Eighty-five years old. Wow. That's a couple more years than I, and there's another person who is already in the upper 90s. Wonderful. But we have a few people who are under 20, believe it or not. Can all the people under 20 stand up? All the children and young people, stand up. Stand up, we want to see you. wonderful to be 96 and 97 and 98 and 85 and 82 and it's great to have young people in the church. Today is also a Sunday to remember the people who have to suffer for their faith, people who are imprisoned because of their faith. Remember them. <coughs> I had the privilege of meeting a man, a pastor, who spent 25 years in prison because he was preaching on every Sunday until communists came and put him in prison. And there he was for 25 years and he came out and he became the pastor of the first Baptist church in the city of Odessa, in the Ukraine, right on the Black Sea. I had the privilege of being in that church. It's a big church. They have about 3,000 people coming on a Sunday morning. They have a choir of over 300. Wonderful. And I had the privilege of being in that church and meeting the pastor. And one Sunday, I was asked to speak to the staff. They had quite many pastors and staff members, and so I spoke to them very early Sunday morning, just before the first service. And it was the weekend when they changed the clock. And um, a lady came from the village. She didn't know that people changed the clock. And so when she came, the whole church was empty. And she cried and cried, Oh Lord, how come I'm still left behind? They all went to heaven. Rapture came and they all went to heaven and I'm still here. <laughs> and she was so sad. We were upstairs and the pastor, the senior pastor heard it and lady crying, so he excused himself and he went down to speak to the lady. And she screamed and screamed. How come, Pastor, you're still here too? <laughs> she was so upset that she left was left behind. And the pastor was left behind as well. Well, we all look forward to being with the Lord. And today our topic is a unique topic. A new song of hope based on that beautiful sound that our senior member was reading so beautifully. Our world is in a real mess right now. We read and hear about a war already in the second year between Russia and the Ukraine. The war in Israel and Palestine the thousands of people die, terrible, on both sides. There are many, many people who suffer loss. But our world is in a mess because there's so much greed, so much selfishness. 
our world is in a mess because of the sexual revolution. Everything is mixed up. Our world is in a mess because so many people are poor. And I mean really poor. Last month I was in Africa, in some of the slum areas. Half a million people lived in a slum. You would not believe how poor that was. Many, not even one meal a day. Homeless people. And right in the midst of a world like that, we hear a psalm talking about hope. A new song, a new approach, a new way to look at the world. We all have a routine, I guess. Some say our prayers, some loud, some silently. Some read the scripture or our devotional every day. Some people read it once a month, once a week. We have a routine. But somehow, the psalmist in that passage today says, we should do something different. We should change our approach to worship God. We should have a new song. We should have a concept of hope that influences We have to think, we have to feel, we have an inner response that should change the way we do things. Some years back I met with a dear friend of ours, a great theologian, probably one of the greatest theologians of our last 50 years. And he told us that during the war he he had a very close friend and they talked about God and, but he was not really interested in God. It's just custom that you once in a while speak about God. And as they talked with each other, he turned around and wanted to talk to him and he was gone. He was shocked and he turned around and 10 meters back there he was lying with a bullet right in his head died instantly. And our friend, he is now Professor Dr. Dr. Muldmann, a very, very famous man, said, that was the moment that changed my life. Not because the tragedy of my friend was taken away, because I realized God cares for me. God has a plan for me. There is hope in my life. And he accepted the Lord right there and said, please, Lord, use me, mold me, change me as we sing in that beautiful song. He experienced a confrontation with the living God. He had to learn that he has to be, he has to be above circumstances you and I have to learn it every day. Nothing, absolutely nothing is above us except God. Everything else should be under us. Quite often I ask people, how are you? And the response I hear quite often, well, under the circumstances I feel, and then we say yes or no, good or bad. We have to be above circumstances. We have to be above the things around us. We have to above, be above all the, the tension and the worries and the difficulties that we are facing today. There's only one thing that has to be above us and that is God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. We have to learn a life above circumstances. We have to learn that life is not me and mine, not I and I and I has to be more He, the Lord Himself. 
a new song is asked for us to bring a new song to present to our living God. A new song expressing the hope that we have in him. One time, must be already several decades ago, I sent a, a letter to 50 of my friends around the world and said, would you please give me one page description of what is hope for you? What is hope? How would you answer that? What is hope in your life? Well, I got 36 answers out of 50, which is fantastic. The others apologized later on, but many wrote what hope is and what hope is in the Bible and what hope is in their lives. And but a teenage girl, a teenage girl, she was only 19, 18 or 19, ran away from home. She was living in New York, in the financial district, right next to the, the towers that fell down and exploded, where so many people died. She stood there and she saw it, how, how these buildings came down, how people jumped out of the windows. And, and she said, I realize there is only one thing I can hang on to, and that is my faith in Jesus Christ. What a sweet statement from a teenager. It was probably the best description of all the, the ones I got about what is hope. What is the new song in your life? When we leave here, what will change in your life? I was meditating and thinking and spent a lot of time to reflect on what is new, how can we change that? How can we speak about it? And I remember a children's story that Corrie den Boom, the, the Dutch evangelist who wrote uh, The Hiding Place, you probably all the generation remember her. She was in a concentration camp and came out and became an evangelist, traveled all around the world. I met her several times and I remember a story, a children's story. I wish I had an illustration that I could show you, but in your mind you can follow me very quickly. She said there is a world of health which is very dear to us. The world of health. Do we have a doctor? Do we have the right medicine? How come we have so many problems? And on and on, the world of health, she illustrated that and made a big circle around it, like a big zero. And then came the world of the family. Oh, how the family is important to us. Do we have a, a healthy family? Do we care for each other? Do we try to love each other as we heard in the opening prayer? And she made a circle around the family, like another zero. And then she, since it was a children's story, she thought all the children want to play. And she had all kind of toys and she put a circle around it, like a big zero, the world of joy and fun. And for some, she wrote down, television is a whole world, entertainment, all kind of things we are doing to spend our time. She put a big circle around it, like a big zero. And then came the financial institutions and the financial problems we have and the ones who have too much have problems too, not only the ones who have not enough. And she put a circle around it. And so she had all kinds of circles, all kinds of zeros, and then in the end, after about 10 of these beautiful illustrational circles, zeros, she put a one and said, and there is God. He's not in a circle, 
He's not a zero, he's a one, bringing heaven and earth together as one. He said, that's our problem. We have zero, 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 ten or twelve times, and then finally we have God. And he taught us that we have to change that. Or you can leave all the zeros, but you have to put it, the one, not in the end. You have to put it in the beginning. And suddenly, your figure is 10 million, a billion, a trillion. Put God first, she told us. That's the new song that the psalmist is saying in this psalm. There's a new way of putting God first, not at the end. You might say, well, we Baptists in Chester, we put God always first. Do we really? We care so much about ourselves and our world and our problems and our difficulties and our world of whatever it might be. And then we add God in the end. A new song, the psalmist said, a new way of approaching God. Put him first, and all other things will be added, as it's said in the New Testament. Put God and his kingdom and his righteousness, righteousness, to be right with God first, and add all the other things, and your life will be different. And you will see things completely different. You will find a new way to praise God. You find a new way to honor him. Your whole life will change. Some of you have experienced that. Peter. He got into trouble at the end. And Jesus came to him and said, Peter, do you really love me? And Peter said, of course I do. Jesus came again to him and said, Peter, do you really love me? Of course I love you. Peter, Peter, do you really love me more than anything else? And then Peter had to admit, Lord, I need you. Help me. I have failed. I have put in you at the end. Help me to put you first. Be the one who is above me. Nothing else should interfere with my life. We have to learn that he wants to be first in our lives. And all the other things can be added. Or you still can be concerned about your health. You still can be concerned about your family and concerned about your job and your wealth and your land and whatever it is. But make him first and you will see that you have a totally different perspective. That is the psalm that we have read this morning. Bring a new song, have a new attitude, change things the way you have done it and all things will turn out differently. And I'm so glad that that psalm is the beginning for our communion service as we have fellowship with our Lord Jesus. When we take the bread and the cup, make a new commitment. Say, Lord, very simply, Lord, I want you to be first in my life. I want you to be the beginning, to be above me, to be around me, to be the one whose blessing is more important than anything else. 
have a new song, have a life of hope, have a life that is honoring God. Peter, do you really love me? Peter, Peter, do you love me more than anything else? Peter, and you put your name there, because I love you so much, he said. Heavenly Father, we come to you asking, please help us to put you first, and not us, and not circumstances, and not things around us, and things within us. We want to put you first so that all the other things can be added and we have a new perspective on life. We see you differently. We worship you in a new way. Be the first, the last, the living, the sender in our lives. We pray in the name of Jesus, our Lord. And now prepare us as we have communion. We thank you that we can do that to remember you, to invite you in our midst, to invite you into our hearts. Amen. We have a song as we gather around the table and we prepare for communion.
Das trägt. Heavenly Father, we commit this communion service into your care. And we ask you to bless us in a very special way. Give us that new beginning, that new song, that song of hope, because we want to commit ourselves unto you. We want to put you first. We want to say, yes, Lord, we love you because you love us so dearly. So be with us and bless us. As we take the, the bread and the cup, we remember you with thanksgiving. Come and touch each one of us. Come and be first because we love you more than anything else. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I think it's tradition that you have a statement of affirmation of faith that we say together. We believe that God is spirit and that they worship him, must worship him in spirit and in truth. That God is light, that we will walk in the light as he is in the light. We have fellowship with one another. That God is love, and that everyone that loves is born of God and knows God. We believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God that God has given us uh, eternal life and his life is in his son, that he is the resurrection and the life, that whoever believes on him, though we were dead, yet shall we live. We believe in the Holy Spirit that comes and convinces the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment that he guides us in all the truth. We believe that we are children of God, that he has given us his spirit. We believe that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness. We believe that the world passes away and the last thereof, but he has thus the will of God abides forever. Let me read what the scripture says. Is that on? Yep. Good. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took the bread. We have given thanks. He broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you to sit in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. To this, whoever who drinks it will remember me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord is in an unworthy way, is guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats the bread and drinks the cup. Let's examine ourselves that we are in the tune in the right spirit, in the right attitude to worship the Lord. We do this in remembrance of me. Now we have the prayer for the bread.
May we pray and support each other on this journey through life. Help us as we live from day to day. There are so many who are hurting and fearful in so many ways. May they know your presence and learn to lean on you. Watch over us, your children, and guide us through the coming week. In your blessed name, amen. Now we have the prayer for the cup. Let's bow our head. Lord, your precious blood was shed to pay the full price for all of our sins and for all who trust in your name. Your light shines in our hearts, pushing away darkness and filling us with your many blessings. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And now we have the privilege of taking that thing apart, <laughs> which is not so easy. Oh, I got it. I got it. Yeah. And we take the, the bread, and then we take the cup the presence of our Lord. Before we have the benediction, I'd like to say thank you for you to come and to celebrate communion and to listen to the Word of God and to the music. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. I also hope time will come when we don't have to use these little cups and <laughs> have the, the real bread and the real cup. But I guess, health-wise, it is important for right now to go this way. But we will ask the Lord's blessing to be upon us. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen.